Thermoscatonic. No, oh, there it is. The Miskatonic. Are you, are you running? Oh, there we go. This game is best viewed in... What? I missed that. Oh, shoot. It's raining. Is that... Bad? Oh. Yeah, very loud music. Turning you down. Okay, give me a moment to update the title. I don't think this game's really that uh, spooky. It just has like a horror theme to it. That monster's got needles out of his mouth. Yeah. So the characters in this game are kind of like very Cthulhu um, like uh, inspired. It's got some pretty interesting music. The Miskatonic. Okay, updated. There we go. Giant mosquito in your room! Oh no! You still have mosquitoes alive? Uh... Wait, I can't make this window bigger? Oh, here. Bam! This is like window mode. I'll just, uh... I'll just have to bear it. Feel scared, man. <laughs> uh, Marie Peanutbutter. Bonjour, we childrens. My name is Marie Peanutbutter, head of occult science at the Miskatonic University. Ours are the most prestigious institution of dark magic, the occult, and all the strange ghoulies that live in your peripheral vision. I'm here today to tell you a story. A story about a little girl that ruined everything. But ruining everything gives you the opportunities to make everything better. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Was that? You ask why I have a giant hand sticking out of my head? Oh yeah, she does have a giant hand <laughs> sticking out of her head. Well, that's because I am French. A thing we have, so no funny business. We, oui? you'll learn about the strange things people are inflicted with throughout the story. After this, you'll think my head, my hand head is cute and adorable, as you should. Hey, it's five head, lol. <laughs> But first, let me describe to you the state of the world prior to the witch girl that ruined everything. Do not fret. You probably know this already. We? Oui? It's got a kind of cute art style. So, you are aware of the giant aliens that we call gods and the cultists that worship them? No? Then let me tell you. Some worship Cthulhu, the main man octopus dragon thing. His cults teach eternal patience, waiting for Cthulhu to come back to them so he can destroy the world. Rude. Some worship Yog Sothoth, the outer dimensional god of knowledge. These smarty brains try to build portals to let him come here, but that would destroy the world too. Not so smarty. Most humans, like our witch girl, worship Shubnugrath, known as the All Mother. Even cultists for other gods will pray to Shubnugrath at the end of their spells and rituals. That is because Shubnugrath is the goddess of humanity. Her cults preach love and compassion among everyone. Very, very lovely, we. That's kind of neat. So this game kind of gives you a little bit of a primer behind uh, the the old the old ancient ones in um, HP Lovecraft's kind of world. But like our witch girl, some can be blinded by the desire for harmony. There are some that would take advantage of the naive notion that all humans are loving and good. Not so lovely. 
Okay, so you know of gods now, we? So let's talk a small bit about the humans of the world. Some countries have been more affected than others by the strange happenings of the universe. For example, in Canada. Ha! In Canada. <laughs> I will be that guy inside with Gojira. Yetis. Thousands of them. But the Canadians are well prepared. Yeti invasions are considered a national pastime. Bring the family. We'll shoot some yetis. Oh, yetis. Okay, they're, uh, she is actually talking about wet yetis. This is what us French call an English person. Note the sharp teeth, blue, purple blush, and big ugly face. A couple decades ago, it was discovered that a huge percentage of the English nobility were actually cannibals, breeding humans in underground caves like livestock. Everyone in England went crazy when it was found out, so now they're all cannibals too. Apparently, the Scottish just found it hilarious. This one is also my boyfriend, so no touching his ugly face. We? Oui? These little fellers are called Australians. When Shokos left Antarctica, they came across a big island filled with lovely, delicious humans. But these humans didn't want to be devoured, and even when half dissolved in the Shogoth bellies, the humans would punch and kick and smash bottles inside them, making the Shogoth very uncomfortable. They're half digested. So instead of trying to eat them, the Shogoths formed this cute little symbiotic relationship with the Australians, granting them immortality in exchange for less punching, so the little Shanes and Sheilas can happily booze and barbie you away for all eternity. This is called an American. Note the silly haircut and gigantic bum. Specifically, this is the American that our story revolves around, the little witch girl that ruined everything. How can you tell she's a witch? Well, there are many clues. Example, the pasty skin, the symptom of spending her days asleep and her nights dancing naked in the rain with her coven to con conjure strange hexes. Also, the little strange choker thing is the closest thing to a uniform they get. Also, she doesn't wash. That's nice. Are you gonna make me look like a dumbass in this story? Cause it was only like 20% my fault. Oh, Charlotte Lestrange. So it's her. Our story begins with our smelly dumbass being briefed on the university's secret protocols after just being hired as a security guard for the occult science building. This game be calling everyone out. You. But on her first assignment, she discovers that all is not as it seems as the prestigious school. Thanks? That's sick. Now, Miss Lestrange, you understand that as security engineers, your off-site assignments are to be kept in the strictest uh, confidence, even from other members of faculty, and especially the students. Aha! You also understand that as a security agent, you'll be in real danger, both from physical harm and mental corruption. You understand that your body is subject to mutation at any point during your employment and residence in Arkham. Rad. And finally, you understand that as a University of Occult Science, you are obliged to assist us with research regarding your supposed magic eyes and failure to comply will result in your immediate dismissal. Um, sure. Well then, Miss Lestrange. Welcome to the Miskatonic University. Awesome! Ah, you must be the new security guard, Charlotte, right? Yep, that's me. Great, I'm Johnny, head of internal security. We'll be giving you a tour of the building you'll be patrolling, then I'll show you to your quarters. Ready to go? Sure. Well, you'll be working here in the occult science building. You're a witch, right? Have you dabbled in any occult science? Well, I'm pretty good at the occult stuff, though mostly I use it for errands and favors for folks. Plus a few hexes, curses, blights, just to keep up that witchy appearance. Stab them all? Okay. <laughs> Apparently... This big boob witch here is is Charlotte Lestrange. Blood into jam, bones into sponge cake, cat into mush. No, not the cats into mush. <laughs> thick thighs, dumb thick thighs. Phallus into tiny screaming vestigial face. Okay, normal stuff. Well, we do things a little differently here. This way. Awesome. This is the Ethereum, where our students can perform experiments on the Necronomicon, the creature who acts as a shield to the outside world, keeping any experiments sterile and quarantining any ex unexpected sun minis. Hi! Hello. <laughs> we didn't know it could do that. Did you try talking to him? You are going to provide some much needed common sense around here, Charlotte. 
This building also houses the Corporeum, a surgical theater where our students can perform vivisections and autopsies on otherworldly creatures. Ah, think speaking of which, this is Eddie, one of our monster hunters. Thanks to him, our Corporeum, professors have been able to gather more information on living horrors than any other time in university history. The trick is to figure out where its face is, and then commence repeated punching. Who's the new girl? This is Charlotte Lestrange, a witch from the Ch Chisunuk Chisunkuk? Chesuncook, Coven. She'll be working security for this building. Hi! Looking after us rascals, eh? Well, just give me a clip around the back of the head if you see me slacking off and I'll get back to work, eh, big stuff? I have been known to whip some ass with big muscles. <laughs> with my big muscles. There you go, come around the chop shop. You want to see what me and the lads were wrangled up the other day? You would just like nightmares, right? Sure, well, the fun ones anyway. Like when your teeth fall out and you smooth them off with sandpaper to make a lovely necklace. Or when you're running down a corridor in slow motion with a bunch of hands coming out of the carpet and grabbing your ankles and you finally stop to ask them what they want and it turns out your shoelaces were untied and they were just super concerned for your safety. I'm gonna take a shower, it was fun. Talk to you soon, have a good day. All right, potato, I'll see you later. And thanks for uh, hanging out. And when you're at school and you stand up in class, but you forgot your pants and you're embarrassed, but everyone compliments your butt. That butt. Well, you're a bloody weird one, Charlotte, so you'll fit in right here. Don't let my sister catch wind of you. She won't leave you alone, you telling stories like that. Ah, and there's our curator of the Corporeum, Miss Marie Peanut Butter. She used to be a void shaman from Paris before coming to work with us. Lunch break over. I'm out. See ya. Alright. Bye, Amy. Have a good, uh... Worst rest of your work day. Hopefully you get things done. As fun as satisfying the void is, my true passion lies in discovering how things work out, we? At least when they're dead. Groovy. What's a void shaman? You know, those dark thoughts you have sometimes for seemingly no reason. The ones that tell you to jump at the edge of a cliff. Or rub the bank when cashing a paycheck. Or drop kick a grandma through a stained glass church window at a funeral. Oh, yeah, I get those all the time. Well, those are not your thoughts. A few hundred years ago, the French art aristocracy's way of life was so decadent and whim-filled, their unbridled sauciness only went and summoned a bloody hedonism god. Damn thing lives under the Paris catacombs, communicates telepathically with people all over the world, urging them to give in to their darkest whims. The French get it in the worst, of course, so... There are char shamans take it upon themselves. Oh, wait, crazy Eddie. I don't know what accent that would be. Upon themselves to do the dark deeds. So the rest of France doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to. Must be a right giggle. Sorry. It's like really hard to read this because it's like all in caps. It's only kind of like one of my downsides of this game. Uh, my last act as a shaman before coming here, I took my clothes off, covered myself in lemon cake and green food coloring, and terrorized a local village as a delicious swamp monster. What? She transformed into a swamp monster? Okay. I quite enjoyed that one. Shall we press on with the tour? Sure! Bye, you guys! So, um, not to be rude, but judging from the bandaged up arms and the sick eye scar and the terror lines in your hair, I'm getting the impression that security work here is, you know, a little dangerous. Oh no, not for you at least. The cult science building is probably the safest on campus. Cause if something went wrong in this building, we'd be, uh, we'd all be too dead to notice. Ginny Tenek. Don't listen to her. She's just a little jealous that the new girl gets the cush cushy gig while she's uh, stuck in the math department. What happens in the math department? What doesn't happen in the math department? There's nothing so cold, so, un so unforgiving, so dark as the mathematicians. The universe is not but an equation. They shriek behind their burnt hair and sludge-tainted cardigans. One that can be solved. But how do you solve the equation of a dozen screaming children being ingested by a black swirling chasm of teeth and clawing hands opened at the far end of the classroom by one of their damnable equations? Damn you, young Henry. Damn, or carry that damned too. So let's carry on with the tour. Next up is the library. Awesome. 
Each building hosts a small library dedicated to researching and documenting the subject that the building's students are studying. Here in the Occult Science Building, we keep an original copy of the Necronomicon, as well as translated copies for our foreign exchange students. That's a lot of knowledge. Ah, here's our librarian, Charlotte. Meet Miss Emily Saccharine. Blue blue. Hi, I love your mask. I didn't know you guys had a Shoggoth here, and a tame one too. Oh, Emily isn't as a Shoggoth. She's just a small, uh, she just had a small accident with the Necronomicon a while ago. Ended up like this. But our cult scientists learned an awful lot about what happens when these with these tomes of black knowledge when you spill your soy, no whip, ice caramel, macchiato, two shots, hazelnut on them. Huh. Sure looks like, looks like a Shoggoth. Purple, gooey, moderately adorable with a hint of terrifying. Cute looking librarian, yeah. Exactly how she described her. Has heart cheeks. Well, that's a Necronomicon for you. It's funny. Spilling a non-fat Frappuccino with extra whipped cream and chocolate sauce just turns you into a puddle of loose bones and blood. Oh, it kind of reminds me of No Face, actually. Um, still hasn't stopped Emily from performing her duties. Hey, Emily. Who you do? <laughs> She's got hearts on her cheeks. Shall we press on? Okay, nice to meet you, Emily. So, no face is technically a shoggoth? That's kind of interesting. Charlotte, this is Lizzie of Dunwich, our Yogg Soth Sothoth consultant. She's taught us quite a lot about the outer dimensions during her time here. Lizzie, Charlotte's the new security witch. Oh, she's so cute. She's got a little bomber jacket. Are you the sort of witch that could go, that does the naked in the rain, or the sort of witch that does the lucky charms and the big hats? Um, the rain kind. You and me are gonna get along. Gish. <laughs> so, like, how come I can't? What are you? That's the Australian ones, right? I'm not sure. I'm a Lizzie. What are you? No, I mean. Why do you look like a shadow, or like part of my eyeball has stopped working? It's because humans can't see. Because they's all afraid of me and my d sister's is appearances. Everything else can see me. That's why doggies are all tucked tails whenever I go near them. Lizzie is an example of a mental phenomenon found only in humans, known as cerebral voiding. It's a trick by the brain to preserve the sanity of its carrier. When a person comes across sights too horrible to comprehend, their brain refuses to render it, instead showing a black silhouette in place of the sight itself. Essentially, instead of Lizzie's insanity inducing true form, your brain is protecting you by showing a shadow instead. Oh, hey, she's she's like Saya. She's like Saya. So, so Saya was like represented as a cute girl instead of like the horror that she was but i saw that interviewer no problem the guy whose face who was just teeth and gums and the girl with the hand sticking out of her head and emily the librarian yep lizzie and her dunwichian sisters are in a league of their own when it comes to horrific appearances we sent a lot of students to the asylum trying to figure her own <laughs> i like the way she looks that is awesome Yeesh. Here's our head of catering, Mrs. Ross. She can cook anything with three or more legs. Yum. Hi. Oh, look at you witchies, all skin and bones. You just let one of my little gremlins know what fills your tongue, and I'll rip the whip it right up. What's the humanitarian dish for today? Day from accounting, my dearest. Who's this chick with the big bust? They all seem to have very big busts in this game. Oh, pork sandwiches. Yummy. <laughs> lummy, lummy, lum. We employ a small staff of cannibals from uh, England, Eddie and the Corporium, and Annie being two of them. We only eat fresh, accidental deaths with the family's consent. Lion Break, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate it. Saya, I see, I see. Usually. Oh, I get it. Um, humanitarian. It's funny. Well, once you're done with Johnny's little tour, let me know and I'll make you a breakfast. You're making her into breakfast? Let me have the arse portion. We'll make steak and kidney pie. Big ol' witch rump. You ain't eating no rump steak, Annie. Your little horde's got poor old Dave. 
Aw, oh, come on. At least let me have your ugly feet, eh? Nice and lean, covered in flavor, and entirely useless. Look at them all the way down there. How's yous? I'm good. How are yous? Um, when I'm done with them? You're streaming so early today. I'm been, I've been streaming early all of this week. Uh, well, actually, no. I'm sorry. I've been streaming Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday I couldn't. And then Thursday as well. Was it Thursday? Yes, Thursday. So yes, I've been streaming Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and today. Early in the morning, because I am switching to a morning schedule. But I'll still be streaming tonight, later on. Shop. Hello, Just Jason. Oh my god, how are you? It's been a while since I've seen you in here. <laughs> we're playing we're playing a visual novel, so I'm I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading here. Great! Let me get a little appetizer, eh? A little lick between the toesies. Pre-brunch snacklet. How about it? Don't encourage her, dear. She'll be crawling all over me until your feet fall off. Um, my bad. Speaking of cannibals. Good morning, Miskatonic is your favorite morning announcer. Oh wait, hey, wow. They, they spelled favorite that way, so I know that this game was designed by a Canadian or a, or, or a UK person. <laughs> Mindy in the morning bringing you all the Miskatonic morning announcements and as when I see fit. It's currently 2.30 in the afternoon, so let's get started. Those of you students that have volunteered for the submerged necromantic... Mantic? Necromantic? Mutation testing? That has unfortunately been called off by Professor Baxter on the grounds that the school's swimming pool is now... alive. Lunch today will be turgid and depressing. I'm working, lol. How are you? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. I've been uh, switching over to a morning stream as I was just mentioning earlier, so... This is my first week. I, I started last Monday, so we're gonna see how that goes. And with the owner of a white... Child, <laughs> please report to the recession office. It's currently being towed. A white child. What was that? That's uh, that's Mindy, the the morning announcer. Does she do that a lot? Perpetually. You seem pretty comfortable around this stuff, Charlotte. Oh, I grew up in Maine. Not as many mutated folks, but they make up for it with all the goofy supernatural happenings. Hey, Johnny, Thirst has been looking for you. Thanks, Chasm. Come on, Charlotte. I gotta make a quick stop off. What happened to her? Oh, that's Chasm, one of our portal diver team. They usually work out of the Dunwich, coming back to write reports on their expeditions. And they come back, of course. So, let me make a quick stop and I'll show you to your room. Nice. I gotta do something for a customer real quick. Be right back. Alrighty, man. You get that customer service going. Cheesehead. Yeah. Dr. Thirst Valentine. Ah, Johnny. So this is a strange girl. The crumbler. The ruiner. Wow, look at this guy. I like how your coal coat melts into the floor. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this is her. Charlotte, this is Dr. Thirst Valentine, the head of occult science and the discoverer of residual evil. His work taught the university about the lingering nature of documenting malicious entities. Essentially, he figured out why seemingly innocuous writings can summon horrific creatures or cast terrible curses. It is why the books bleed. That's cool. I had a book that kept growing teeth and screaming and whatnot. It was my diary, though. Excellent. I shall inform my colleagues of your arrival. We will merrily indulge in the popped corn. Ta-ta! I like him. You know, you come highly recommended, Charlotte. Oh yeah? By who? Charlotte! I can't believe they finally hired my tiny baby monster! Ruman, what are you doing here? Got me some gainful employment, teaching kids about old school dark magic known as occult science in my class. What do they got you teaching? Uh, you know, I'm in security, keeping folks safe, wandering the halls, swinging a comically large keychain, bopping folks on the head with a flashlight, top secret missions, stuff like that. Pretty on point hiring selection, if you ask me. Heh, <laughs> yeah, safety. That's definitely a keyword when I think of Charlotte, with strange in her magic fire eyeballs. Hey, those cats turned inside out on their own. I sneezed. Hush your gums. Well, speaking of cosmic abominations, I gotta go teach a bunch of 18-year-olds how to turn blood into peanut butter by dancing in the rain. You're gonna love it here, Charlotte. The Miskatonic's just one big like-minded community, all working towards making the world a better place, just like our coven. Come find me when you got some time off. There's nothing cosmic about them, Ruman. They were just cats with their bones on the outside. 
they got better. So you two are in kind of a cult? Sort of. We're which cultists of Shabnugarath. Essentially, we believe that since the new universe is filled with crazy, awful bullshit, that humans should be nice and loving to each other. Some of us, like the cult of the Black Sun, have these awesome bake sales for their neighborhoods, whereas others, like the cult of loveliness, hunt and slaughter encroaching monsters to protect their hometowns. We're sort of like goth girl scouts. What about you, witches? We take all our clothes off and dance in the rain, typical witchy stuff, but we use black magic to do nice things for the townsfolk. Body snatching, breach ba birth babies to make them crawl out of their mom, uh, summoning fixer pixies when a guy's leg falls off, using transmutation circles as portals for when the trash collectors want a week off, stuff like that. Wait a minute, the cult of the black sun do bake sales? And the cult of loveliness are monster hunters? What does the cult of kill, murder, death, plant gardens or something? Oh, you mean the cult of fetid retribution? No, no, those guys deliver meals to old ladies. And what was that about magic eyes? Ah, oh, don't worry about that. I, I just do this. <laughs> Is that her eyes open? <laughs> That's her eyes are open. Okay. Uh... Please tell me that this will be over. Okay. And sometimes weird stuff happens in people's minds. Usually they forget something or get an eye twitch. As long as I don't use it on little animals, it's pretty harmless. Okay, so let's keep going. Oh, creepy, I like it. <laughs> Lol. This is your room, a little tight, but the lunch ladies bring us security guys breakfast every day. I'll let you get settled, then you can explore your patrol route until Bob gives you your first assignment. It's perfect. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, I better go familiarize myself with my patrol route. Hello again, it's time for a quick tutorial. We? Oui? You're about to enter what's called patrol mode, wherein you're allowed to freely investigate the occult science building. Oh, we get to actually move around here. Use your mouse to click characters to initiate conversations or doorways to move to other places in the building. Charlotte's patrol will always start here, outside her room. And if you want to save the game, hit the little cog in the bottom right of the screen. Give it a try! I could if you would stop talking. Oh, I clicked on her. Whoops, I didn't get to read that. Where's the cog? That's the cog? That doesn't look like a cog. Okay, I guess we'll save the game for now. For now. Does that even look like a cog? That looks like half of a cog. Staff dormitories. Please report all breakages, spillages, corpses, interdimensional tears, and unintended viscera to the member of janitorial staff. They are appropriately trained in sanitation, body disposal, quantum physics, and mild voodoo. Okay. <laughs> Nutty Annie. Hello, Spooky. How's your feet? Why the fascination with my feet, Annie? Surely the juiciest stuff for cannibals is like the brain or whatever? Oh, no, 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 no. Can't eat brains, my lovey. Eating brains gives you the shiggles. Shiggles? What's the shiggles? Shits and giggles. An English disease makes you shiver and laugh uncontrollably while you lose control of your body. Then you die. Had a friend who had it back home. Signif significantly less hilarious than it sounds. That sucks, man. Yep, and now I'm all inconsolable, and the only way to cheer me up is to give me a bite of your giant bum. Damn it, Annie. Annie, you almost had me feeling like you weren't a complete ass. I won't need the complete ass, just half a cheek at most. Okay, that was pretty clever. I'm here all week. Nico Day? You're the new security girl, right? I am Nico Day, the archivist of the occult science building. Feel free to tell me your deepest and darkest. Does he have teeth in his throat? Um, okay. I left school when I was nine to become a witch, and quietly hope that schools don't teach people anything important past that. Interesting. And they do, by the way, quite a bit. He has, yeah, he has teeth in his throat. And a, a, a fox scarf. That's cool. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> don't listen to him if you can count and spell everything else is optional. Roger Cavendish, chief. And what does that tell you? You can do more than count and spell, right, Doctor? Well, a few things. Bringing people back from the brink of a terrible baphometic death. Creating vaccines for supernatural diseases. Have you ever seen a prosthetic tentacle? Don't get him started on his damn prosthetic tentacle. Any more little nuggets of secrecy, Charlotte? Um, 
okay, here's a fine one. People think that I cock my hips all the time because it's a shub nugra uh, witch coven thing when really it's because I'm secretly proud of my butt. What? <laughs> Look at all that personality and plot. Hello, emotional bullshit. Oh my god, it's been forever since I've seen you, man. How are you? How are yous? It's a good butt. The rest of me sucks, but it's a damn good butt. Yeah, this uh, this visual novel has, uh, has a lot of uh, sass to it, so... On behalf of all cannibals, thank you for sharing it with the world. You're welcome. I'm excited. What are you excited about? Do tell. Do tell. This guy has like tentacles coming out of him. I guess he has a tentacle, uh... What, what was that he was talking about? Something about tentacles. Hey, I have a good butt. Why can I relate to her? <laughs> Need to do errands. I will lurk. Alright, Mr. Bombastic Man, thanks for uh, lurking. You get your errands on while you're lurking. Ruman Fletcher. So, I'm subbing a class for one of the astronomy guys, right? And substituting means it's time to watch a documentary in the lecture hall. And everyone's watching this thing and it's like, the closest star to our solar system is about 4.5 light years away. And you thought you felt lonely. And I'm like, why would you assume that? Why assume that about literally every person who watches this thing? I grew up in a coven surrounded by spell singling psycho bitches and now I work in a university. I salivate at the concept of loneliness. I wonder if they say that in nature documentaries too, trying to make weird animals relatable. Heh, <laughs> yeah, and you thought you sprayed pungent urine at attacking predators. And you thought you had a projectile tongue that was sticky at the end so you could catch cute bugs. And you thought you had a four-headed penis. What the F has a four-headed penis? <laughs> what the hell? I'm excited because I get to go to my first pride fest in the few days behind my parents' back. It's a grown adult, but still not out to parents. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Well, that's cool. That's really cool. But uh, I hope uh, I hope it is everything that you imagined it would be, you know, with all the friends and fun and everything. I've, I've never been to one, but uh, they, they sound like they would be a lot of fun. Echidnas? Echidnas? Echidnas. I can't pronounce that. I did not know that they had uh, four, four penises. What? <laughs> Maybe girl echinas are into the whole eldritch horror kink. Guy echinas uh, gotta step their game up and turn their peens into horrific nightmares. I made a sign with my flags and it says free hugs. Yay for hugs. Hugs are good. I have no argument for this. <laughs> Are you are you going with friends or I'm assuming you're going with friends? Annika Silverstein Stein Silverstein Stein. Everyone, every female cast in this uh in this game has really big boobs. I'm going with my friend Megan. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I hope you have lots of fun. And that's uh, when is that? In a few days. Ah, it's new security. Annika Silverstein. Steen? Silverstein. I'm gonna go with Silverstein. Alien and Tech Theology. Caleb Workinshaw. Pun enthusiast. Charlotte Lestrange. Badass witch cop. So, what happened to the last security guy? Are they on sick retirement adventures? Last I heard, he landed in Aruba. Then the rest of him landed in Cancun. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. She's got like these weird like buggy arms coming out of her back. Yes, quite tragic. Entire occult science building exploded, leaving only a crater oddly filled with indentations of the faces of the workers and students who were in there. Wait, they spelled there wrong. That was before our time, of course. Eight more days, and I hope to make more friends when I get there. That's awesome. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Because you guys will be all there for, you know, a common reason, right? <laughs> Caleb Workinshaw, since we're alive and whatnot... Huh. But there's like protections from that happening again, right? Oh yeah, they put a sneeze guard in. Exactly. Right. Well... <laughs> she just stops right there. Yeah, we're all part of a beautiful spectrum. This is true. This is very true. But uh, h how are you? Other than looking forward to this, uh, this uh, um, festival here. 
How you, how you doing? It's been I feel like it's been a long while since I've like since I've last spoken to you. Um, did you know before it was completely abandoned, Innsmouth desperately tried to become a tourism town, tried to focus on aquatic circuses, gift shops, and freak shows featuring leftover deep ones. I like the I really like the art style in here. It's got like a it's got like a <laughs> they all look pretty busty and stuff, but uh, it's kind of neat. I happen to be most named most attractive deep one hybrid every weekly beauty contest. Huh, you don't look like a deep one. That's probably why I kept winning. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm good. Wait, is that a river nymph? Me though. Me though? Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. No, I think that's, uh, she's supposed to be a deep one. So if you're familiar with like, um, uh, HP Lovecraft's kind of like stories, uh, uh, this this game is supposed to like take influence from like you know uh, Lovecraftian lores and stuff like that. So she's a, a deep one, and they're kind of like fishy people. My brand is based on river nymphs. Oh, like here on the uh, on Twitch. Do, do do you stream? Do you stream? I think I think I maybe might have seen a couple of your streams. But I'm sorry, I have not been visiting on YouTube and Twitch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I probably should consider putting my videos on YouTube and expanding there. But I haven't really done that. A lot of that. Dave is tilling. All my classes are at 7 a.m. Got any ideas for a book that'll help me wake up in the morning? That's me. Mornings are hard. So the schedule where I'm trying to do morning streams is kind of hard. I started an ask blog with my River Nymph OC and it's popping. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. That must be really fun. Simon Longclaw. Ah, you want to internalize zombification in the necrology aisle. All the benefits of being a zombie without the drawbacks of looking like a corpse. It is. Simon Longfellow. Though your intestines will occasionally fall out of your butthole. That doesn't sound good. Huh. They must have a book for everything. He looks like Harry Potter. Yeah, a little bit. Though, I take coffee over scooping intestines back into my butthole. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I- yeah. Me- me- me too. <laughs> that- that was an interesting conversation. Oh, it's the no-face Shogath, um, Emily character. Hey, Emily, do you guys have any books on advanced witchcraft? I want to keep fresh while I'm here. I'll take that as a- of course we do, Charlotte. Have you seen the size of this goddamn library? We got books that ain't even been written yet. Yo. The Science of Rain Dancing by Professor Anna Undercarriage. Huh. Guess maybe I'll fit in here a little better than I thought. I've been doing science all this time. Much like electricity, the human body acts as a conductor of magical energy intrinsic in the air of regions of high concentration. This effect is exacerbated with the wet skin, leading to many witch cults dancing naked in the rain in order to conjure spells effectively. Indeed, it seems paranormal encounters seem more frequent when it's raining or in regions of the world where rain is frequent. Ooh, I wonder if that means that uh, where I live, in Vancouver, BC, where it rains all the fucking time. <laughs> That, that a lot of witchy things are happening. The witch cults of Seattle- oh, they even list Seattle <laughs> and Scotland are considered incredibly powerful and fearsome, though this is simply due to their geographical advantage. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah, and also, it isn't England like really rainy as well, so. Dancing na naked in the rain is best for witchy spells. So does that mean that Vancouver is suited for witch covens then? Would they be taken away from their home deluges? They would be simply as effective as their new weather permits them to be. Yes, because it's like, if if any if you're familiar with Vancouver, it rains like all the freaking time here. It's like, I want to say like eighty percent rain throughout the year. <laughs> lots of rain. We get lots of rain. Ha! Sick burn. Hello, Wubbly. What you reading? Nothing. Just some stuff about witches. You wouldn't get it. No, probably not. That stuff's too cool and magical for a dumb old cannibal like Annie. No place for an ugly old purple blood like poor old dumb old cannibal Annie. Poor dumb Annie. Well, hey, come on. I didn't mean it like that. Hey, 
Next time it rains, I could teach you a few tricks. How about it? Get you a pet frog, give it a couple extra eyes. What do you say? That sounds fun, but can I make it a suggestion? Um, sure, I guess. Rather than rain, can we dance around in buffalo sauce? I think I want a little zing when I bite your bum. Damn it, Annie. Why don't you go bug someone else? Because you're the only one that finds it funny. There's a difference between laughing at something because it's funny and laughing at something because it's ridiculous. Most folks run away from folks like me. They seem to take threats of being devoured quite seriously. And there's nothing I'd like more than watching you run away, Charlotte. Ah, oh, you beat me to it. Yeah, yeah. See you around, Annie. Amelia Lynn Luc Lucit. Um, on my way to dance naked. See you soon. <laughs> All right. See you, emotional bullspit. It was a uh, nice seeing you. So maybe maybe I'll see you around. And uh, thanks for hanging out for a bit. A fun trick of the black magic users of the old days was to write how-to spellbooks that simply by reading them would cast the curse that the reader was trying to learn on the reader themselves. Fiendish, but funny, according to them. What happened to your eye holes? How to throw ethereal fire directly into somebody's eyes. Luckily it was just the Cliff Notes version. Her eyes seem to be there. So what's with the puppets? We help her talk with unfamiliar people on unfamiliar subjects. One must become more familiar with us in order to become more familiar with her. Spent a little too long in the psychology department, huh? I've heard research in all them dark psychi psychiatrics can rub off on people. And you spent a little too long in engineering to not know when someone's pulling your leg. Hmm, so working and studying in certain buildings has a residual effect? I wonder what effect working in an occult science building has on witches. I hope I don't start taking a chalkboard to my coven's dance rituals. No one wants to know the angle of rotation on one of my sick freeball and pirouettes. This uh, this game has some pretty crazy dialogues. Oh, it's the wit, uh, the uh, the shadowy girl. Hey, Lizzie, what you got there? She's my favorite character. <laughs> Grilly cheese. It's the best human invention. Everyone says so. <gasps> Grilly cheese. Everyone? Like everyone in the university? Everyone in this dimension. The Migo, the Yithians, the Star Spawn, Chthonians. When someone makes one for him, the home world elder things. Even Young Sothoth likes one now and again. Really? Not like the internal combustion engine? Not penicillin? The telephone? Light bulbs? Eyeglasses? Great big trains? Microscopes? Nah, we don't need any of that. So, humanity, for all its achievements, all the love and loss, all the wars, all the technology and innovation, all the art and culture, everything we've done, and we're considered by the rest of the universe as those guys that make a mean grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. That grilled cheese. So, hey, why do so many people have tentacles coming out of their back? Have you ever faced a baffled necrotic explosion head on? Uh, no, I can't say that I have. Either, neither has anyone else. First rule of baffled ne necrotic explosions, turn away from the baffled necrotic explosion. Well, I guess the first rule would be, don't cause a goddamn bathroom necrotic explosion, but people can't seem to help breaking that one. Um, you can probably tell from the lack of extra limbs, but I have no idea what a bathroom whatever actually is. It's the process of deliberately caving in an artificial portal through our dimension to stop extra dimensional entities from getting out. It's a last resort, since usually there are teams of portal divers still inside, but hey. Better than the end of the world, huh? I guess. Hey, maybe you guys should try transmutation circles. That's what us witches use when we need to summon creepy stuff and none of my coven have any weird old tentacles. All you need is chalk, a little blood, some candles, and a complete disregard for pants. Yes, yes, we've all been taught the witch method, but the scientific method reduces the element of randomness, increases the size and duration of portals to allow for human entry, and best of all, you get to keep your clothes on. So, science is magic plus underwear, huh? 
uh, who was I? This guy. June Bloody Moon. Studying at the Miskatonic is a huge opportunity. There are so few monster hunters in my hometown. I think my job prospects in the future are pretty bright. It does come with a few drawbacks, though. You're not likely to finish your studies exactly the same species as you started. Well, hey, at the very worst, I'm pretty sure this place could always use more freaky-ass teachers. Nothing out there for me. My jurisdiction's right here. Although, patrolling the whole university would probably be good for the old leg muscles to get all toughened up in case of any sick monster attacks. Can't stand a lean steak myself. Much preferred a pressed ham. Stop trying to make me laugh, Han. I th it ain't gonna work. Student Corporeum. Students are encouraged to practice business section uh, during recreational hours using a locally bred horrors, nightmares, pets, or children available. These resources are included in your tuition. So what do you reckon they're doing in there? Poking and prodding, same as always. Eventually they'll get bored and we'll be tasked with carding off the husk. Hey, he's got a three-eyed cat. Is that a cat? I don't know, it's kind of cut off at the top. It's kind of cool, it's got a really long tail. Hee hee, if you told tiny child Albert that in the future care and corpses would be considered the easiest part of the day, I think he'd pitch a fit. I'd have thought the part between carrying the body to the corporeum and carrying it away would be the easiest part. Though I guess hanging out in the spooky ass hallway can be exhausting too. Mindy in the morning. Just a small word of advice to the biology department. You can just stick a dog and a war veteran into a centrifuge and rejigger the mush into a living being. And everyone say hello to the world's very first werewolf. There's clearly a reason I'm not down there with you guys. Aside from, you know, the carnage it would cause. Did you guys hear that? A goddamn werewolf. You guys want to check it out? Yeah, his brain's outside of his head. <laughs> We're not done here, Mike. We've got to get the incinerators going before we can knock off. Connors is right. First we burn whatever nightmare the Comporium's working on, then we can go gawk at whatever nightmare the biology department's working on. They got their own burners after all. He's got tentacles for legs. I always thought you had to get bit by a werewolf to become a werewolf. Then again, why would any werewolf stop at one bite and not just eat whatever it was biting? Maybe that's why we don't have zombie plagues anymore? This is the student Ethereum. Due to a recent unscheduled experiment by a member of our security team, the Ethereum has become talkative and boisterous. As a result, our most boring students are required to spend recreational time chatting with the Ethereum in an attempt to shut it up. A phallum. Essentially, you just need to maintain your resources, spending them on village and stat upgrades, but village upgrades give passive benefits to both villages, so you need to be careful that you're not helping the other team in their village. See, that's where I went wrong with my first game. After I constructed our breeding pit, the other village gained enough population resources to speed their building and foraging processes. What the shit are they talking about? I guess video games? So, after you've drawn from the encounter deck, if you draw as a monster, pick from the monster deck, then you can choose to fight or flee. If you fight, compare your car player's card ferocity stat with the monsters and add a d6 to both stats to determine whether you win or lose. If you want to flee, it's the same process with the liquid liquidity, liquidity stat. Once you've returned to the village board, you can add your successful foraging tokens to the village's stockpile. Whatever team successfully builds their village first wins or whatever team's village runs out of food, materials, or population resources loses. And do I have to go by my in-game name too? Couldn't hurt. They must be talking about some sort of board game. Never played one before. Not many places to put the board when you're off dancing in the woods with nothing but a smile on. And nowhere to keep the pieces. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Rena York. Uh, he kind of looks a little bit like Groot. What's unique about our reply is that all the plants and animals share universal language or a sort of collective consciousness, guiding things like migratory patterns, blooming seasons, what is predator and what is prey, things like that. 
It also acts as a conduit of the emotions of organic life. A flower is plucked, the garden of screams, or the garden screams. A cow is slaughtered, the whole herd weeps. Humans seem to have lost this ability over the last hundred thousand years, and that those few that can hear it go mad with the knowledge of it. Just so you know, the plot is very upset with you humans. Guess I better go apologize to my bagel. Oh man, I hope that ain't true. As a witch cult is of a love goddess, I should probably be spreading the love to everything, not just humans. And I've eaten a whole lot of burgers. Hello again. How's it going? Can't complain. So you're the one who taught the taught the Ethereum to talk, huh? Um, I guess, but I think he knew already. Hi, I'm. Wait. Let me figure it out. Hmm. Layer of grime over the extremities, so you're aware of the mutagenic atmosphere and have applied a home remedy. So you're local to New England. But no real accompanying stench other than that of dead flowers, so you're often with other people. Mild wobbling at the touch indicates a lack of exercise, but the very dirty boots means you're outside in the rain a lot. Judging by the short black skirt and choker, you're an active worshipper of Shub Nigarath, the goddess of love and humanity. And combining the grime, wobbliness, smell, and outfit, you must therefore be a member of the Chesson Cook Witch Coven. Wow, exactly. Although they were just observations, so what's with the creepy tentacles? This is as close to a handshake as I get. Oh, well, enchanté. So what's your deal? Oh, I'm just a Camorgan, and the record keeper for the experiments performed on the Necronomicon, though I was a detective before my arms got all noodled. How do you keep records if you can't control your arms? With a handshake like that, how'd you hold a pen? What do you mean? I have perfect control of my arms. Oh. Oh. Well, it was nice meeting you. See you later, Ethereum. Bye, Spooky. Bob's office. Staff are encouraged to only disturb Bob on matters of immediate security of or apocalyptic concern. Students are encouraged to go away. That's nice. Do those wormy things act as your arms? That's pretty groovy. Yep, the thing to remember about all these occult shenanigans is that most of these monsters are just really ugly animals, and animals can be trained. Cool. How'd you train them? Traditional combination of treats and mild punishment. As a treat, I let them keep my arms. And as a punishment, I headbutted the shit out of them. Now, they never leave mommy's side. Don't even have to command them for the easy stuff. What counts as easy stuff when training floating worms to act as replacement arms? Oh, you know, cooking, cleaning, getting changed, all the essentials. You should see me play the trombone. Okay... There are several benefits to having every internal organ replaced by half-sentient liquid slurry. For example, you wouldn't believe how much of your brain is dedicated to simply maintaining the atomic processes of your body. With the slime, my brain is now free to fully ponder the questions of the universe. Huh. Well, I gotta admit, you're putting a good spin on this. Still, having to carry a handkerchief around to mop the incorrigible sludge out of my eye sockets is a drawback. Forget hygiene. You're at the Miskatonic. If you're only trailing black slime, you're practically cleaning the place up. Nothing gets an occult scientist down, I guess. Though, wouldn't his brain also be replaced by the goo? Lauren H. Miskatonic, 1935. The geography building is probably the least dangerous lessons on campus, but also the highest security. Can't have the public figure out where the plateau of Lang is, or worse, really. Why not? You know how some people can't help but get as close as they can to the scene of a car crash? Imagine that car crash being a centralized supernatural apocalypse based on the Pacific Ocean. Folks would climb over each other to check that out. Yeah, I guess. I bet it looks pretty radical. So what's with the folks changing their names for that board game people are talking about? It's to make the consequences of the game seem more real. A lot of people need an escape from work or their studies, and the game's a good way to do that. Huh. You think I could play with you guys when I've got some time off or whatever? Depends. What's your in-game name gonna be? 
Hmm. Thrust powerful. Badass barbarian. Save in sick winches or whatever. Hmm. Nope. Bye. Better than everyone else's dumbass names. Whatever. Who'd want to play a game where thrust powerful the badass barbarian sounds non-canon anyway? Bob. Good afternoon, Charlotte. Are you ready for your first assignment? Sure. Lay it on me. Excellent. The Miskatonic has small research posts located all over the world, dedicated to collecting and relaying occult data back to the university via radio. One such outpost is in New Orleans, where you'll be going. Hello, below average cheese. How you doing? We're, we're, we're doing a, a visual novel with really interesting looking art. Okay, what happened in New Orleans? And it's got like very sassy dialogue. So if you're into the ends, that's that's what we're doing right now. We're not sure. Our researcher is supposed to relay daily radio messages back to us, but hasn't checked in for several days. Your task is to go to the outpost and knock on the door. If he's there, ask why he hasn't been relaying data. If he's not, return and tell us. That's it? Knock on the door? Exactly. Under no circumstances are you to enter the outpost. Just knock. And leave. Um, okay. So, how do I get there? After a few, well, disasters, the government demanded that the Miskatonic experiment be completely sealed off from the outside world. As a result, every outpost in the country is interconnected by these tunnels. Helps tr stop transporting creatures running off into the wilderness. See? Spooky. So, I'm walking to New Orleans? Oh, no, of course not. You'll have a driver. Hi! <laughs> oh, it's the shadow girl. Lizzie at Dunwich. Oh, hey, Lizzie. Looks like driving down the spooky-ass tunnel system together. Yeesh. New Orleans is not too far in straight lines. Should get there lickety split. Have fun, you two. Wait, they spelled two wrong. And remember, don't go into the outposts. Okay, see you later, Johnny. Guess this is the place. Huh. That's weird. The door's open. So? Well, the mission is to knock on the door, see if anyone's in, and then leave. If the door's open, something bad might have happened. Like what? I don't know. It could be anything. Maybe they're out of banana bread. Maybe someone's pregnant and they've gone to get a doctor. Maybe Cthulhu cultists have invaded to have a sick hoedown. Maybe they're pregnant with a Cthulhu cultist banana bread baby. We should check it out. It's supposed to be authorized to go into outposts. Dunwitchers and witches are for knocking on doors, not poking around outposts. Come on, we'll be, you know, showing initiative. They'll be like, wow, Lizzie and Charlotte, you sure saved the day poking around in that outpost. Good thing you did, or all those... Coot chupacabras would have gotten back to home base. Whoops, I clicked on it. Oh, there. And ate all of us. Okay, so you can actually dismiss the box to actually look at the art. I don't think that's what they'll say. Well, I'm gonna take a look anyway. Feel free to join me if you want to save the university from chupacabras. Guess it'll be okay if we just look. Oh no, she, she convinced the shadow girl to come with her. Fear the Goo, New Orleans Outposts. Initially, the outposts were each equipped with long-range radio systems, able to communicate with each other, stave off the loneliness, good for morale, until the Australia Outposts incident broadcasted the screaming of an entire country on all frequencies. Now, the outposts can only communicate with the Miskatonic Hub. Can't hear each other. Good for morale. I better sweep this whole room before we move on. That's the detective thing to do. Uh, what can we find in this room? This thing? Fear the goo. Huh. Fear the goo. Written in goo. What goo should I be fearing? Should I fear the goo the fear the goo is sign is written in? <laughs> Maybe he's peanut butter. Humans are allergic, right? L l allergic, right? Only the ones who hate deliciousness. 
Mmm, nope. I think this is a warning about the same goo it's written in. Can't be that dangerous then if the warner preferred using it over, you know, a pen. Maybe he has no pen. Maybe his pen is goo. Maybe that's why he's so fraidy. Because of pen goo. Guess there's only one way to find out. Let's keep going. There's, there's a lot of jars of goo here. That's a lot of goo. Extraction facility. Tools broken during the extraction process will be replaced from the technician's wages. Extraction tools are for ooze extraction only. As scrumptious as the inside of jelly donuts are, extraction tools are not a suitable method of obtaining said jelly. Initially, we thought the signs were overkill, the Miskatonic already being notorious for its anal retentive approach to the supernatural al- Oh, approach to the uh, supernatural. Alas, after several decades and several thousand casualties, we learned that the most dangerous thing in our work was a wandering mind. Hmm. Ship falls. The door's locked. So? So, there might be goodies inside. Eldritch goodies. Look, it says there, extraction facility. This must be where they're getting the goo. We gotta get in there. Why? Because if someone tells me to fear something, I like to know exactly where that something comes from and how to punch whatever made it in the head. Whoops, mass. Besides, it sounds exactly like something that the hottest new occult deck to have the team in New Orleans would do, right? Solving some sick mysteries. Okay. She's just, she's just going with whatever. Little Yan... 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 They. they were allowed a small number of personal effects on site. Easier to just let them have their little trinkets than to enforce contraband rules. And the occasional knife in the gut for a supervisor was seen as an affordable expense. Looks like a syringe. That's a beefy ass needle thing, uh, needle hole thing too. The goo is either going into something or coming out of something. Either way, it looks like it'd hurt just like hell. Looks like a poster of Innsmouth, home of the Deep Ones. Maybe that's where whoever lived here was from. What's a Deep One? They were the race of fishy, froggy folks that lived in this underwater city off the coast of Innsmouth. In exchange for plentiful fishing and crabbing seasons, they would mate with the local Innsmouth babes and create little baby hybrids. Apparently it was a pretty sweet deal until some wandering douche came through in the town and ruined it. Went and told the government they torpedoed the water underwater city and rounded everyone up and sent them to concentration camps and whatnot. Kind of sad, really. I hear the little hybrid tadpoles are adorable. Hmm, some sort of manifesto. April 9th, half a gallon. His name was Daniel. April 10th, two gallon. Told me to give her locket to her lover. April 11th, one gallon. He was still alive. What have I done? And then it stops. Huh. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> huh, looks like a diary. Each night, my darling wife. Hidden deep in the back room of an Arlene, Arlenesian brothel, 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 Arlene, Arlenesian brothel, prays to her goddess Shubnigra, keeping the faith groovy, that we might find a new home, that I might find work, much less dreadful. She is becoming too large to convincingly lie that she is carrying a human child, so we must gather our pennies and leave soon. Huh? There's a little photo. Yeah, she's pretty big. <laughs> Aw, look at her. So pretty. So full of tadpoles. And he is kind of handsome in that, you know, amphibious way. Aw. Why is that aw? Why is that not you? All the storybooks say that there's no purer love than that between a girl and a frog. What? April 12th, 1936. Hey, that's yesterday. A new prisoner was delivered for ooze extraction. He claims he was a riverboat captain with a ship that sails up and down the Mississippi River. He claims that there is a deep one refuge situated in Minnesota, 
wherein my people live and thrive, hidden from the university's horrific testing and the government's terrible camps. I shall rescue my beloved tonight, under cover of darkness, and we three shall make for Minnesota. I'll miss the radio call in, and they shall send someone to investigate my squalid concrete prison, but we shall be long gone. Huh. Looks like the university was keeping this feller against his will, using him to extract goo from folks. But why? Maybe we should ask him. No way. If the university is as evil as this guy says they are, we best keep our mouths shut and do a little independent investigating. We gotta find out what this goo is, what they're using it for, and why they're being such bastards. Hold and sell. Not for holding delicious pastries. I wish. Ugh. Okay, I gotta take a quick break. This game is kind of unfortunate. It doesn't seem to have a lot of music in it. Hold on. It sounds like there's a little bit of music. It just sounds like ambient noise. And there's no uh, options here, so I can just, uh, I'm just gonna leave that like that. But uh, I'm gonna just take a quick five-ish minute break. There you go. There you go. I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, here we go. Did we did we click on the pastry door? Fucking shit out of my dick. <laughs> Another goddamn locked door. You look angrier than you should be. Sorry. The concept of, you know, privacy makes witches a little testy. Whatever. Let's find ourselves some keys and F these locks up. What's with all these um, posters? Monogamy Madness. Dead Randy. That girl had no arms. What the fuck? Are those the super rare dead Randy Monogamy art covers? How do you get these? Those are ultra banned all across America. I gotta. We gotta take these. What? Dead Randy, the sexy necromancer, is this cute little incubus that runs around saving zombie girls after the world ends and then boning them. The story arc was written by my first coven de den mother, Agnes G. Williger. It's a story of how this succubus girl, this purple girl here, wants dead Randy all to herself, but while they're all mutual, dear Randy gets sad that he's not boning mad dames, and him and the succubus girl learn that love should be shared with everyone, not saved for individuals. It's adorable. Why did humans ban it? Uh, the same reason they ban everything. Folks were getting too cheerful. Promoting cultist ideologies, they said. Not sure how love everyone you can and don't be a douche is considered the same as, you know, let's get Cthulhu to F the world up, but whatever. Right? Right, Cheese? Right? Plus, I guess Dead Randy's pretty rampant in this series. Hard to get that love everyone message across in the story about a uh, nymphomaniacal... Uh, no, wait. Nymphomaniacal blue midget without getting, you know, vigorous. But the message was so awesome, completely true to our cult's mantra, and everyone in Chesuncook taught, taught us thought us witches were pretty groovy after these stories came out. Preach love and compassion, for the universe offers neither. They put that as our town model after Miss Agnes wrote the series. Come on, he's gotta have hard copies somewhere. The girls in the coven will shit their minds when they hear what I found. <laughs> Shadow's just- Lizzie's just like, um... Dead Randy, the sexy necromancer, death of a deviant. He looks like a little boy. Like <laughs> Spicy Dimes Magazine. Dead Randy, the sexy necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 1, Death of a Deviant. Once again, Dead Randy finds himself expelled from the Incubus Academy of Hell for failing the not looking like a tiny idiot portion of the class. Forever exiled, Randy seeks refuge on a desolate earth, destroyed by a mysterious plague that leaves the land barren and all but zombies. Using his powers of necromancy, Dead Randy cobbles together another village made of bones and sinew, drawing zombies from all over the wasteland looking for a place to live. Once populated, Randy affectionately names his new town the Bone Zone. Aw yeah, I peek a few cute zombie girls in that shambling horde, one way ticket to the Bone Zone. <laughs> what the heck? Damsel in Decay. Dear Dan uh, Dead Dandy Randy <laughs> Dead Randy the Sexy Necromancer Harmony Arc Episode 2 Damsel in Decay. With the bone zone completed and the zombie villagers settled, Dead Randy enjoys a life of carnal luxury, but with hordes of zombies come with their arch enemies the only living creatures left on Earth. That's right. Packs of feral Pomeranians are attacking villages in the Bone Zone, and when one of his lovely consorts are dragged away, it's up to Dead Randy to save her and drive away the feral pups. Man, he is humping the shit out of that zombie. I'm starting to understand why they banned this arc. <laughs> Butts aren't supposed to fall off. <laughs> what the heck? Why? Dead Randy the sec Sexy Necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 3, Polyamorous Pollyanna. A new visitor from the other world arrives in a bone zone, a salacious succubus named Sally. Marveled by his accomplishments, Sally becomes enamored with dead Randy, demanding that the pair revoke their demonic job descriptions and become mutual lovers. 
Shocked at the idea that another demon could love him, and much to the dismay of the hordes of the zombie girls, Randy vows to become Sally's boyfriend. Poor dead Randy, seduced by the idea of exclusive affection. Like my dead mother always says, love a hundred people and a thousand people will love you back. Dead Randy the Sexy Necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 4, Trouble in Paradise. After a few months of unrelenting ravaging, Randy and Sally start to become bored of their exclusivity. But while Randy aches to share his love with the rest of the village, Sally demands that he spend his pent-up affection of grinding through their turbulent relationship. Bad move, Sally. You got two folks going against their nature of sharing happiness with the world, desperately trying to keep their happiness between each other. Share it! Dead Randy the Sexy Necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 5, Monogamy? Madness. Finally, Sally and Randy see the error of their ways. After an amicable breakup and a promise to remain sharing a portion, albeit a small one, of their love between each other, Randy and Sally tear through the bone zone, vigorously loving everyone in their path. Okay. Aw, I love a happy ending. I guess the last 40 pages are just meant to, you know, lock the message down. <laughs> 40 pages. Not quite sure what the zombie butt's falling off is supposed to represent, but I'm sure Miss Agnes nailed the metaphor. Whatever it is. Okay, mm now it's just pervy. Well, that was fun. I learned about sharing affection with the people I meet, being kind and caring, and learning not to judge others. Well, and how to bone mad zombie dames. Let's carry on with the investigation. I'm sure Lizzie would be happy to hear about that. Designated sleeping area. Look, before we go any further, let me just say that what we do with the Miskatonic is sometimes a little vicious or a little sadistic, even albeit abjectly, ugh, abjectly cruel, but it's necessary, alright? The universe is a writhing cauldron of unrelenting malice. We do what we do to make sure you don't realize that fact. A key to the holding cell. Let's head back to that locked door and check it out. Success! Let's, let's find out where this goo's coming from. Oh. What's that? It's a brain. A human one. With holes in. Don't humans need their brains? Um, yeah. Yeah, they do. There's gotta be an explanation for this. The university's stealing brains to extract weird orange brain goo out of them? I mean, why? What's the point? This is probably why they didn't want us in here. Because of boo gra <laughs> brain goo experiments. Yeah. We're going to have to play it cool, figure out who we can trust at the university, and ask them some questions. Well, Ruben's been there a while, and I know I can trust the fellow witch. And you can trust the fellow Lizzie. Exactly. That's like half the faculty right there. Besides, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for all of this. We just gotta be careful not to get fired for insubordination or treason or whatever. Come on, partner. Let us do, so, do, do us some sleuthing back at home base. So, Charlotte, how was your assignment? Good! It was good! I knocked on the door, waited around outside for a while, no response, came back home. And you didn't go inside the outpost. Inside? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't go inside. I was told not to, so I didn't. Just knocked on the door and left. Haha, <laughs> inside, you crazy. Right. Well, we'll send a team to investigate and search for our missing researcher. Thank you, Charlotte. We had no intention of sending you on an assignment so early. So, um, what do I do now? You return to your quarters and get some rest. Tomorrow you start patrolling the occult science building. Right, right. Well... Talk to you later, Bob. Looks like we're in the clear, Liz. Are we still being detectives? Damn right. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. But for now, let's get some sleep and start investigating tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow, Charlotte. I'm gonna go pray to Yog saw thought. See you, Lizzie. Oh, wow. Now we finally hear some music. Is this really what the world looks like? Did she change her outfit? There's like 
chunks missing. And chunks added. So the little witch girl had discovered that the university, whoops, had been harvesting goo from kidnapped prisoners. But what was this strange goo? And why would the university be doing something so dastardly? Some pepedy. <laughs> oh, and um, just so you know, I had no idea that they were what they were planning. I was just that cute French girl that was vivisecting creepy monsters for the sake of education. We? Oui? So don't accusing all of the university of being all dastardly. Some of us were as dumb as the little witch girl. Why do you keep calling me the little witch girl? I'm exactly the same size as you. Our story resumes with our little witch girl quietly investigating the strange orange goo while keeping up appearances as security guard of the occult science building. But with what the little witch girl did not know was that her loyalties were being tested at every turn. I'm 22. I'm a grown-ass woman. Voluptuous, almost. Almost. Good morning, Miskatonic. It's me, Mindy in the morning with the Miskatonic morning announcements. What is this morning you speak of? Sounds awful. Oh, the music is kind of booming now. Why? Why are you so loud now? I'm going to turn you down a little bit. It's so bassy. There we go. There you go. First off, thanks to our dedicated and highly trained fodder, the Corporeum is now host to a hefty portion of the Cthulhu flesh, and all at the record cost of only seven fatalities. Man, I'm getting fat. On to international news, the Miskatonic University's Canadian branch is suffering a yeti infestation, brought about by their recent How Many Yetis Can We Get series of experiments. I can't tell if that means the experiments were a success or a failure. Is there a human resources department in this building? Only I'm wondering if the best way to start a workday is by blurring news about a fucking Yeti apocalypse into my head. Call me crazy. Oh, hey, Lizzie. How's it going? What you doing? Grind bath keeps all that New England atmosphere off so I don't get any extra bits and bobs sticking out of here and there like the folks here. Secret witchy trick. Want to try some? What's in it? Oh, lavender, rose petals, sandalwood, ambergris, some guy's blood, mushed worms, horse placenta, powdered dog, a small assortment of rocks, bacon grease, squirrel, and peppermint for that tingly, fresh feeling. Horse placenta. Like my dead mother used to say, ain't nothing gets through horse placenta. She drank a lot. They sent a team to New Orleans to investigate what we found, so we're on errand duty today. I think someone needs your help in the library. Okay, when my grime seeps in a bit, I'll go see what they want. Thanks, Lizzie. That horse placenta grime bath. Oh, Annie, I thought Mrs. Roth did breakfasts. She's off catering some dopey executive brunch for the higher-ups, so I'm delivering today. Here's yours. Who is it? I don't know if it had a name, seeing as it's a bacon sandwich. I could ask if you want. Wait, really? It's like human food? No, it's a pig. No, I mean, never mind. Thanks, Annie. No problem, my lady. You want seconds? You come find me. Toodles. Huh, guess Annie's not made up of 100% pure aggravating after all. How about that? Well, apparently I'm needed in the library. Better get over there. Hello, Webley. Did you enjoy your little bacon sarnie? I did, thank you, Annie. What was the sauce in it? It was super scrumptious. Ah, that's a secret English sauce recipe. I smuggled some in under my fabulous petticoats. Back home, we simply call it brown. Ah, shub. Don't tell me. It's made out of, like, shredded freckles and ripped out throats or something. Am I gonna get sharp teeth and purple blood, Annie? Oh, no, no, no. They made brown sauce before the great... Funening. It's made out of vinegar and molasses and all that. Tastes great on a cooked arse, though. Oh. What's the great funening? When everything got fun. Used to be really boring before everyone went a little nuts. Should have seen me playing badminton in my ugly arsed white dress, being courted by the local boys in plaid waistcoats and coiffed hair, pims and puck 
pickle on cocktail sticks, picnics on the weekend at the park, bus to town, comes every hour, please and thank you, routine and pleasant, bloody tedious. I don't know. That sounds kind of nice. Ugh, you should see it now. That bus route? Now the bus is covered in spikes, and the driver trades his roadkill for a night with a pie maker's brother. The Madman courts are now all communal barbecue pits, where whole villages get together and cook burgers out of the football team from the next town over. The local boys wear nothing but a smile, and the local girls use their white dresses to dress nothing but bite wounds. No bastard bobbies botting you on the head for pissing up the wall of the local pictures. We ate them first, of course. There's a lot of fun to be had when you're in it for yourself, my lovey. Huh. Well, apart from the cannibalism, that doesn't sound too bad. Shame about all the cannibalism. Where's the library here? Hey, guys. You wanted to see me? Ah, witch girl. You wouldn't happen to have any more secrets you d to divulge. Hmm. Let me think. Oh! I discovered I had magic eyes when I was nine, the day I left school to become a witch, I sneezed in class, and I liquefied my home ec teacher. You have magic eyes? What do they do? Well, I don't have much control over them, but basically I do this. <laughs> oh, this thing again. The magical eyes. Okay. There's no way to, like, click past this, it just... She just does, does her thing. And stuff happens. Usually it's harmless. Making people think strange things or their limbs a little numb. Makes tiny doggos do backflips or babies say their first words. But, you know, occasionally it makes stuff turn inside out. I guess that's an extra secret for you, Nico. Well, it's my secret gathering that I need your help with, um, Charlotte. We're looking to expand the library to house my collections, but the engineering department exploded last night. I need you to find some power tools that'll help us in the library build an extension. Are you up to the task? Sure, I guess I can handle that. Excellent. Try the corporeum. If anyone has power tools in the building, it'll be that French girl. I can't remember my father's face. The corporeum? I'll go check it out. This place? Oh, hey guys. Have you seen any engineers? We're trying to renovate the library. We still have engineers? I thought they all exploded with that dopey machine they've been trying to build for yog knows how long. Mm, nope. There's still a few wandering around campus, withered as broken-hearted parsnips, a lot of them. Gotta have filled their shrapnel quota by now. I saw a student, no word of a lie, his entire head cut in half. Oh, shit. Really? Yep. But he was always a little two-faced. Lol. <laughs> two-faced? I've heard the engineers use the Ethereum to store complicated prototypes, Charlotte. Chances are they've got what you're looking for. Thanks, guys. I'll go check it out. Hey, Vicky. Where the hell is everyone? The engineering department. Didn't you hear the explosion? Most, pe most people are off carrying the wounded to the infirmary. Oh, yeah, of course. So, what are you doing here? Well, I don't have any arms. Ah, lucky break, huh? Well, it was more of a lucky ripping off and eating. Huh. I uh, don't know where I'm supposed to go here. Sup, wall man? How's the science? Vicious and unrelenting. Radical. Hey, Jess. I'm told there's some sort of engineering project one of the guys left here. Do you think the library guys could borrow it? Huh? Oh, yeah. It's over there. Did you find it? It's some big, ugly... What the fuck? What is this thing? It's like half car engine, half stake, half steel purse. Is this for fighting ultra vampires or something? The reasons you don't teach here just pile on top of each other. I have a rock solid lady boner right now. I gotta have one in black to show the coven. The loser shit. Take it then. We're gonna use it to shut the ethereum up, but that ain't happening. I thought witches were into herbs and eyeballs and cauldrons and stuff. Why are you rock solid over that monstrosity? First and foremost, witches like awesome stuff. Eyeballs are awesome. Cauldrons are awesome. Secret midnight dance-offs are awesome. And the lady boner is awesome. You are a colossal lunatic. Thanks, Jess. I'll see you later. 
Hey, Spooky. Niku is waiting for you in the library. Is that the thing? Yup. Glorious, ain't it? If you say so, looks like something they'd build for fighting ultra vampires. I know, right? Hey guys, I got a thing! Ah, Spooky Girl. With the engineers taken ill, we've decided to use the shredded remnants of their department to store Nico's archives. Just until the engineers, you know, start existing again. Yep, we don't need to renovate the library until they restart their technical course, which requires students with arms and or legs. Does that mean I get to keep the thing? Help yourself. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. I just want to look at it. Well, good luck with that. Okay, job done. I'll go put this in my room, do a quick patrol, and start my private investigating. Ah, Charlotte. Thanks for the help with my archives. Care to add them with another secret? Um, let me think. Well, the reason my hair is like this is so I don't accidentally use my eyes on something. If one of my eyes is covered up, it seems to lessen the effect. Weird, huh? Oh yes, I've heard about your magic eyes. I may have a small experiment for you tomorrow, so don't go poking them out before then. And remind me to build a Charlotte ward for my archives. Sounds like fun. See you around, guys. Why'd you leave the coven to work here, Ruman? Oops. Oh, actually we should save this game. I haven't saved in a while. Well, what's the cult of Shub, uh, Shub Nigra's motto? Preach harmony and compassion for the universe offers neither? Exactly. Try to make the world a better place because it's incredibly shitty and that's what these guys do, man. But rather than being nice and helpful to our neighbors, they're creating vaccines, technology, all that kind of stuff. The Miskatonics on the frontier of occult science and working here means you get to be a part of the collective of history makers. Trust me, Charlotte. They'll remember us when these guys cure cancer or polio or tentaclitis. Tentaclitis? Well, that makes sense to me. What about you? Why did you decide to work here? Same reason I became a witch. I really like all this creepy bullshit. Ruben seems to think these guys are on the level, and if I go blabbing about what I saw in New Orleans, I could lose my job. Maybe it was just a handful of nutty folks performing weirdo experiments outside of the university's eyesight. But then again, it was a whole facility dedicated to it with a tunnel leading there and warning signs and stuff all over the walls. No way. This was a legit operation. I'm gonna find out who's at the top. So what have you been working on? The rediscovery of one of the lesser species of Yith. It appears to be a form of black sentient cloud, though occasionally forming random solid shards of ar or icicles in its core when under severe distress. The Yithians seem to use them as a force of form of nourishment and humor, torturing them before they inhale the smoke. The odd thing is, in one of the last chapters of the narcotic narcotic manuscripts, the Yithians write that the clouds communicate in a human language. I've seen Hyperborean, Hy Hyperborean writings describing the human soul as a floating black spikes. Funnily enough, sounds like the two might be related. It would mean that the first pre-human contact with the Yithians were situated in the lush jungles of the Arctic. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think we've got an expedition to plan. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Our school's swim team each has a custom-made swimsuit to suit their needs. Their needs, of course, being the extraneous limbs or mutated proportions most of them have. What the fuck is a swimsuit? A suit that you wear when you swim? I'm starting to get the impression that witches are the odd ones out. Uh, Aldrich Library books branded with the school's insignia are to, under no circumstances, leave the library. Branded books found outside the library will be shot on sight. <laughs> the books themselves will be shot. Whoops, uh, I missed that line. Nope, it was a pretty smooth transition. Oh, I did figure out a cool trick as to having my intestines falling out. Wait, can I? No, I can't even go back. So if I uh, miss a line, I miss it. Oh yeah? What's that? Just grab them and rip everything out. 
Works like a charm. My torso is completely hollow now. That sounds like literally the worst thing that can happen to a human being. But if a dumb idea works, it's not a dumb idea, I guess. Gross. Did you know our library holds records of every encounter with Yog Sothoth, the horrific god of eternal knowledge in human history? Wow, how many encounters have we had? None. Weird, right? Oh. Maybe that's why there's so many goof fe goofy fellers around? No knowledge god to give him some knowledge? Huh. That explains a lot. Hello, Wobbly Bum. Fancy meeting you here. Indulging in some light reading, are we? Well, I was going to check out Tentacle Tactics, a dissertation on regaining control of rogue transmutation circles, but I've lost my appetite. For knowledge. Oh, these? White chocolate and sugar paint. Jo I just make these in the kitchen to remind me of home, you know? Wow, really? Pfft, no. The engineering department exploded, remember? Means I get to pig out. Awesome. Thanks, Annie. She's a cannibal, so I think she's eating a bowl of ears. Occult Science Entrance. Students of occult science are discouraged from interacting with other students of the Miskatonic alumni. As strange or upsetting as occult science seems to be, the, for the subject is incredibly tame in comparison. Ask yourself why anyone would come to the Miskatonic University to study geography. How did you survive the engineering explosion? It took out the whole department. I was in the garage across campus. It's one of the great things about being a mechanic. You don't spend a lot of time trying to invent a better wrench. Because you're too busy overcharging for spark plugs and speaking and peeking at pinup calendars. Gotcha. We had a pinup calendar at the Coven headquarters once. And by pinup calendar, I mean a spell of the month calendar. And by headquarters, I mean Susie's house. And by once, I mean every year since I was nine. Thanks to our efforts in the corporeum, pre pre, -turn, pre, pre preternatural medicine has advanced 200 years. New England's mutagenic atmosphere has gone from a cataclysmic Armageddon to a mild mutational nuisance. When I was a kid, I saw a guy whose face had was a butt crack. Alive and well, thanks to the corporeum. Does the creative writing teacher seem a little weird to you? Whenever someone answers the question wrong, his eyes start pouring with blood. The blood thing's a little disconcerting, but when the class starts clutching their heads and covering their ears to drown out the shrieking, that's what gets me. Huh. That creative writing teacher is either some sort of a banshee or just a huge douchebag. Oh, excuse me. It's got to be someone from the occult science department who's responsible for extracting brain goo from people. Best to keep my snoop in here for now. Uh, I already read that. I'm going to take my two weeks holiday to work on one of the skull crackers. Sailing around really has got to be the easiest job the Miskatonic offers, right? You know they call it the Nightmare Corpse City for a reason, right? Because it's a nightmarish city filled with corpses, or a city filled with nightmarish corpses. Ah, they say that about everything. They said that about Milwaukee. I bet it's a nightmarish city filled with equally nightmarish corpses. But then again, I've never been to Milwaukee. Ying Ren Cygnus, China, causes the victim to see a pair of glowing eyes in places of pitch darkness. Sufferers were terrified of falling asleep. Nothing, noting that the eyes seemed to get closer whenever they looked away from them. The worst sufferers saw them even when they had their own eyes closed. N Narcotic Plague, Italy. Scriptures and texts were being hidden inside Italy's most popular newspaper crossword puzzle. Those that completed the crossword were rewarded with terrifying revelations of the birth of humanity, most being driven insane by their new knowledge. Domestic earwig, New England, a simple earwig that crawls into victims' of ears at night, but makes sounds of horrific muffled screaming and violence. Sufferers thought that their neighbors were literally murdering each other, many trying to save contented wives by murdering innocent husbands. The male population of New Zealand halved over the weekend. Well, that one wins. Excuse 
excuse me. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting kind of uh, sleepy, so I wonder if I might. I think I might call the stream soon, so I can sort of catch a quick rest before I have to go. Hey guys, whoa! What's this wriggling meat slab? That's right there, a piece of Cthulhu skin. Charming, ain't it? Grody. But I thought Cthulhu was like some huge alien god. How'd you guys get at such a, a ch huge chunklet of him? Well, he might be a huge alien god, but he is still corporeal. We? Oui? Funny story. There's the lost underwater in the Pacific called Rilly that used to act as a prison of Cthulhu. Cults have spent a th couple thousand years trying to get him out of there, but a few years ago, some Norwegian whaling crew accidentally let Cthulhu out of his cage. As Cthulhu chased their yacht out of desperation, the crew decided to ram his face with their boat. That caused Cthulhu's head to explode into mushy goo, disabling him. But his head slowly started reforming the moment it exploded. Smart fella then immediately told the Miskatonic, who now employs a fleet of icebreakers, to continually drive through the mushy remains of his head, stopping him from reforming and destroying the world. Sounds like a fun gig. What are you Wigglies doing? They point towards the rest of their hosts, desperately trying to reform We. Nowadays, our supply ships use small pieces of Cthulhu flesh to point the way to Rilly. Awesome! Thanks for the biology lesson. So they use pieces of Cthulhu as a compass? I hear that the faculty's heading to Dunwich in a couple days need the locals to help build a new portal. Whenever I hear the name Dunwich, it puts a grin on my face to know that however, however tough my job gets, at least I'm not a portal diver. And it puts a smile on my face whenever I get a portal diver, driver's, or diver's paycheck. Damn shame your job of standing in a hallway ain't so lucrative, huh? This guy's face is full of craters. Chasm. <laughs> That's gotta be a pretty big paycheck if it's worth a face made out of buttholes. Um, buttholes. Extra cerebral sentence seems to be a common factor outside of human race. Even when decapitated, some creatures seem to function with some control over their actions. This guy is missing a chunk of his eye and and uh, skull socket. It's a difficult thing to study, at least if you have any qualms about cutting the heads off of a diverse selection of adorable animals. I really hope those guys have qualms about he cutting heads off of adorable animals. All the qualms. So, is there anything else I should know about nature and its communal consciousness or whatever? Yeah. Don't eat carrots. They hate it. Communal consciousness? That's a cool idea. It would be a lot easier to spread harmony if everyone was connected at the brain. Then again, it'd be a lot easier to infect people with the asshole virus. Probably for the best that we all think for ourselves. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Um, I think... I'm going to end the stream early. Oh, I didn't mean to click there. How's it hanging, Wallman? What's say you and me get out of here, hit the town, grab some street food? Could go for a foot long. Awesome. Please don't encourage the Eldridge Barrier protecting the Western Hemisphere of our planet from our incredibly volatile experiments of the original Necronomicon to misbehave. Ah, sorry, I'm just fooling around with him. What you been working on? Currently, the effects of applying samples of Necronomicon parchment to heated patches of human flesh. Oh. Um, and? The sample of parchment actually scribes the entirety of the Necronomicon's contents onto the subject's skin, essentially making a new copy of the book by tattooing the subject's skin. Or, you know, scarring. And the people you're doing this to are okay with that? Uh, I don't know. That's not in my department. Why? Um, never mind. See you around, Jess. That experiment sounded pretty nefarious, but nothing about a brains and goo extraction. Better keep an eye on it. Okay, um, so here we go. Save. That's saved. Alright. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna end the stream here. I'm feeling pretty tired. So I'm gonna I'm gonna catch a little bit of a rest before I have to go at like 2.15. So 2 o'clock is normally when I would end the stream, but uh, we'll end it here a little early. 
let me see if I can find someone else to raid. We have Dog Pirate with some Dead by Daylight. I noticed that he's been going on earlier, so he's he sort of has a similar earlier schedule, it seems. Which is kind of interesting. Alright, so we're gonna go say hello to Dog Pirate. And, uh... Yeah, I will see you guys later tonight. I will have I will be doing another stream tonight, and we'll do uh, Freak Fridays with RE7, and that'll probably happen like closer to eight eight thirty. But uh, yeah, thank you to those of you who did come out and hang out with me in the morning slash afternoon, and uh, I will see you guys in the next stream. See you, everyone.